Hello everyone! Welcome back to Royalty Soaps and the Royal Creative Academy. Today we are going to be making our second soap in our beginner soap making series. So if you haven't watched all of the previous videos, go back and do so. That is where I will be highlighting all the ingredients and materials we are using today, lye safety and soap safety, and prep for your raw materials as well. If you have already made the orange soda soap, be sure to tag me in a picture on Instagram or social media so I can see it. Congratulations on getting your first batch completed and I can't wait to make another one with you today. As I am trying to gradually increase the complication of the design, today we are going to be making a two layer soap, a green layer on the bottom and a pink layer on the top. The recipe that we are using gives us lots of working time so this shouldn't be too difficult, but even if we mess up a little bit and puncture our initial line, I have also included an alternative design that includes a spoon swirl to still make it look good even if we mess up a little bit. I like to uh, go ahead and leave a little margin for error in there. Are you guys ready to make your second batch? I sure hope so. Be sure to watch the entire video all the way through before starting your project. I want you guys to know exactly what is going to be required beforehand. And without further ado, let's, you and me, make our second batch of soap. I have my table set up now. Here's my oils. My stick blender is plugged in with the blender head on. I have my spatula and a paper towel folded in half for me to put both my spatula on and my blender head in between sections. This just just keeps any finish on your countertop from getting messed up. Alternatively, if you don't have a plastic countertop like mine, you could also put down an actual junk towel or buy a thicker tablecloth. I have my two dollar store containers here in equal sizes ready to split this batch in half. And with my long sleeves, my gloves, and my goggles and hairnet on, I'm ready to retrieve the lye. And once again, if you haven't watched our video on lye, safety and safety during soap making, please stop right where you are. Go watch the safety video and follow all of the precautions listed there. Now, as you can see, my oils here are at 83 degrees Fahrenheit, but my lye water solution was at 75 degrees Fahrenheit. I would like it to be 80. So to raise the temperature of the lye water solution, I'm going to put my closed container into a hot water bath. I'm gonna let this sit for two to three minutes and that should raise the temperature. So after sitting in the hot water bath, for two to three minutes, you can see the lye water solution is now 88 degrees and my oils are 85, so within 10 degrees of each other and still below 90 degrees Fahrenheit. This is quite a lovely working temperature, so I'm going to remove my blender head and turn it on its side in the oils, pick up my lye water solution with both hands and pour it down my stick blender, screw the lid back onto the lye water solution container, attach the blender head to the blender base, and we are gonna blend to light trace. And once again, I will put a real time counter on the screen so you can see about how long it takes me to get there. Everything has been incorporated. There is no oil sitting on top. And whenever I lift my stick blender head, you can see the drip line sinks right back into the batter. It's not even sitting on top of the soap yet. Because we're going to be blending so much more, this is the perfect consistency for our project today. So I'm gonna scrub a little bit of that soap off the blender head. I'm gonna place this right here on my paper towel. And now I'm gonna split my batter into two equal parts. Now, if you would like to weigh this, you can, but don't feel any pressure to because eyeballing it is a pretty safe bet. If you pour a little too much in one, just pour some in the other. Now you're going to scrapey, scrapey your white container using big, broad strokes with your silicone spatula that hopefully you got at the dollar store. And now it is time to add our colorant. Now we already know that we're going to split our TD water in half. So we will pour half of it 
into our teaspoon and the other half into our teaspoon. And if there's a little left, which there almost always is, you can just split it between each container. Most of the time it's only a few little drops and won't make much of a difference. And then into one container, we will add all of the Always a Bridesmaid. Be sure you scrape out this container very well. And whatever you have left in it, that's all right. We will just wash it out with soap and water and reuse our cup over over and over and over again. Once again, scraping out my container for the mint julep. Put it off to the side to be washed. And now for the fragrance oil. So if you opted to do the basic soap making kit, you will only have one of these, but if you opted to do the upgrade, you will have two of them. If you have two of them, pour one into each container. But if you have one of them, let's split it in half. You can weigh or eyeball this, whichever one you are most comfortable with. Obviously, I'm pretty comfortable with eyeballing it. I've done this many times, but you can also pop these containers on the scale, tear them out, and pour out and pour out 0.5 ounces of fragrance oil in each container. This pink I am putting on the top of mine, so I'm going to put it off to the side because I'm not going to mix it until I need it. However, if you want to put the green on top, mix your pink first. That's a fun design choice you get to make. You want pink on the top or green on the top? Now I'm gonna put my stick blender back into this container. You can see there's plenty of room for both the fragrance oil, the stick blender, and all the colors. And I am going to blend this on high until everything is incorporated and the soap has thickened just a little bit. Now, whenever I dribble this on top, you can see it is sitting on top of the soap a little bit. It is at light to medium trace right now, which is the perfect consistency consistency for pouring into our purple mold. Before I pour, I'm going to run my spatula around the edges of this mold just to make sure that everything is completely incorporated. Sometimes you have some stubborn colorant that likes to stick to the side. And then I'm going to break the fall of my batter by placing my spatula into the mold. So I'm going to turn it this way so you guys can get a little bit of a better view at what I'm going to be doing. I'm just going to pour straight onto the spatula and hopefully this will help me avoid having air bubbles in my soap. The harder your soap has to fall, the more likely you will be to get air bubbles. So we're just going to help it along its way by ladling it into this mold. Don't worry about getting anything on the sides. If you do, that's all right. We can clean that up later or you don't even have to if you don't want to or you don't care. If you do happen to get something on the side like I have here, just scrape it up with your spatula or alternatively, you can wipe it off with a paper towel. Now tap your soap on a sturdy surface. If that's not the table that you're working on, then tap it on the ground. You should see little air bubbles start to rise out of it, and this will make sure that your soap is completely level all the way across. So how do you know when it's time to mix up the next layer? Well, I'll tell you, if you move your mold and you see a lot of wiggle to it, like you see if I do this, that soap is doing the wave. You don't want that. <laughs> You want the soap to be firm enough so that when you wiggle the mold, it's not moving that much. Maybe a teeny teeny tiny little shimmy, but nothing as big as the wave it's doing right now. Because we're using a slow moving recipe, this will take a little longer to set up than most of the soap recipes out there, but you also have titanium dioxide, which helps things thicken up, and you have fragrance oil, which also helps things thicken up. So I'm gonna bet it's gonna be somewhere between the five to six minute range. Okay, so I've let the soap sit for about 10 minutes and you can see when I tap it up and down, there's not that much wiggle to it. There's a little bit of wiggle, but it's not sloshing from side to side. So now we can mix up our second layer. And because the recipe is so runny, you can see that second layer is still plenty fluid. So I'm gonna stick my stick blender straight into the batch. I'm gonna tap the air bubbles out and blend. You can also see I did not wipe my stick blender down. In fact, I scrolled scraped my spatula on the side, but don't worry, this color is not going to make any difference at all. It's just not dark enough or pigmented enough to do so. We're going to tap out any little air bubbles that may rise to the top. There's a few there, not many. And then we're going to pour our pink onto our mint. Now, before I do this, let me just tell you, if you break through this first layer, that's oh 
K, okay? It's hard to get right the first time. You might need a little bit of practice. And if it breaks through, I'm gonna show you a really cool swirl that you can do with no fancy equipment that will make it look splendid and super purposeful. So don't beat yourself up for that. Now I'm just gonna put my spatula as close as possible to the top of the soap without touching it. And that's how we're going to ladle on the pink. And we're gonna let that pink drip itself to the edges of the mold. So apply a very steady stream of soap and let the soap fill itself in. You don't have to maneuver anything around, just keep pouring. You might find that there's not enough room with your spatula to get to the very end, that's okay. You can either turn your entire mold around or you can just change the direction of the spatula. That's what I'm opting to do this time. Just spun it around the other way and then we're gonna keep pouring and let me tell you, you will feel so much better about pouring this in once you can't see the green anymore because it feels like smooth sailing after that. Just gonna keep pouring all of this in. Now I'm gonna take the time to sort of shimmy it about because we have a little bit much and I wanna make sure that it's gonna be even across the top. Lovely. Now, I do have to scrapey scrapey my container, but I'm going to gently tap this first. Once again, just to level it to make sure that everybody gets some. It's still quite running at this point in time. I have been working now for, oh, I'd say 20 minutes or so. And if it's still runny, that's a good thing because once again, we're trying to give you guys as much working time as humanly possible. Now, the design I'm doing on top is not going to be very textured. So I have a little bit left here in my container. I'm gonna move my mold off to the side and let it set up for about 20 minutes or so before I texture it. And then in one of these empty containers, I'm going to add the rest of the soap. And different batches vary based on all the additives that you put in, based on the temperature. Every batch is its own unique thing. So you want to keep an overflow container nearby. If you have a little white shot glass, that'll do. Maybe you have a little mold like an ice cube tray or something sitting around so that you can make little individual soaps. There's lots of trinkets and doodads around a house that would make pretty good soap molds, so scrounge around and see what you have. When in doubt, one of your disposable colorant containers will do. All right, got my little soap cup. I'm gonna move that out of the way. And before we let this sit, I am going to purposefully mix one half of this soap batch. For those of y'all who pierce that bottom layer and are freaking out, once again, don't freak out. It's not a big deal. Your soap is still gonna be soap. It's still gonna smell great. And we can fix it by using a spoon swirl. So you're going to take a plastic or a stainless steel spoon, make sure it's not aluminum, and you're gonna stick it in your soap and make a swirling motion. Just wind it in a circle. I'm gonna stick mine right in here and I'm going to stir in a swirling motion, just like a little tiny concrete mixer, just like that. Ooh, it brought some of that pretty green to the top. Tap that down a little bit. Any little bits that came out, you can plop them right back in where they belong. Get back in there. And any little bits of color that get churned up, you can either leave them or you can gently scrape them off the top like this. Using a paper towel, I'm just going to wipe down the edges of my mold. Okay guys, so this has been sitting for about 10 minutes. I didn't need the full 20. And you can see it is already holding the shape of my fork. So if you let this sit, for even longer, it will have an even more defined shape, but I don't want anything too extreme on the top of mine. I'm just gonna take this plastic fork and gently rake it across the top. Now I'm gonna stop short so that there is a part of the bar that doesn't have any fork texture on it. And that's where I'm going to put my leftover mint mica. If you guys remember that I kept some back for this purpose, I'm going to decorate that part right there. You can make really, really straight lines with your fork. You could make wavy lines with your fork. You could do a spoon texture on top. It is whatever you are feeling. This is part of your creative process. All right, now I'm going to tap this down all the way down the soap. You know what? I've changed my mind. Right there at the end of the soap, I've changed what I want to do. Instead, I'd rather 
pull to the middle. And look, because our batter is still nice and fluid, I can do that. I can just up and change my mind and you can too. If you've decided, hey, I don't like the way that looks, then just scrape it off and recomb it. No big deal. Okay, come back and scrape this way. Make it meet in the middle. Okay, and using the other side of the fork, I'm just going to swirl this middle part so I have a nice flat bit to put my mica on. Boop, 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 boop. Awesome. Now using a clean popsicle stick, I'm going to open up my little mica bag. I'm going to get a little bit of that color on it and I am very gently going to tap the popsicle stick so that the mica falls right down the center of the soap. I'm initially starting with it down the center, but who knows, I may decide that I want to put it all over the soap. Ooh, it looks kind of pretty to splash it on the ends there. Might splashy splash just a little bit. Yep, I'm putting it all across the top because I like it. <laughs> I'm just gonna dump my bag down and just tap it all over the place. <laughs> now, if you've opted for the upgrade, now would be a great time to add some of that into the mystic holographic glitter. Just gonna put some of that on my popsicle stick and sprinkle it around. And then we are putting it away for three days. Now maybe you're looking at this and you're like, Katie, I don't like that. You should have left it alone. And if that's the way you feel, awesome. Then that's what you should do with your soap. Obviously, I wanted a little extra bits and bobs on top, but if you want to leave it plain, go ahead and incorporate the rest of that mint julep into your batch and leave the top pink and sparkly. Remember, when you let this sit for three days, you need to put it somewhere safe and out of the way of pets and children and other people who are not properly suited up to be touching soap. So maybe that's on top of your refrigerator or in a cabinet, just somewhere that you can keep closed off from the rest of the humans and animals. In 72 hours, your soap should look something like this. As you can see on this half, it has been swirled. And on this half, it is nice and even. Those colors have mellowed out. I know this pink was looking a little funny the last time you guys saw it on camera, but it has really turned into something spectacular. So I'm going to turn the soap on its side. I'm going to take my little pear knife here and just mark it at the one inch mark. And then for the ones that I'm cutting by hand, I'm going to try to make this as straight as possible and make a line all the way down the soap where the original mark was. And now let's cut these three swirly soaps. So I'm going to set my knife right on that mark push straight down, and this is what it looks like on the inside. Ooh, how in vogue. Ooh, look at this one, that one looks even better. And here's the final swirly bar. Now, if you've opted for the royal upgrade, you can get your cheese cutter. We're gonna hold this down after we've lined it up with our cutter and press gently to make it nice and straight. And here it is cut with the cheese cutter. Honestly, a cheese cutter is such an effective and inexpensive way to make your soaps look super nice. If you have a little extra money for an upgrade, I would say it's definitely worth the $20 investment. And this is what the straight lines look like. Because we let that bottom layer sit up for such a long time, you can see it's perfectly flat. The top looks lovely. And can you guys believe it? This is going to be your second soap. And if this isn't enough to get you hooked on the mint julep colorant by Mad Micah's, I don't know what is. I tried to pick at least one very trendy color palette. And this mint is giving me all of those California West Coast vibes. Alternatively, if you're using the cheese cutter and you don't like the teeny tiny drag marks that the mica and the glitter on top top or making whenever you cut it, then face the smoothest side towards the front of the wire and that will significantly reduce how many drag marks you get. These two bars right here are gonna be slightly bigger than the other ones and I'm just gonna press down gently and I'll show you guys what it looks like whenever you face the soap the opposite way. You can see it's a very, very, very smooth cut. I showed you in the last video how you can use a spoon to bevel the edges of your soap. This time we're going to use a potato peeler. 
glue. So very gently, I'm just gonna press on the edge of the bars. If you want a thicker bevel, you can press a little harder. I'll do a thicker one on one of the other bars so you can see. But for this one, I'm just lightly touching the edge and it's peeling off that unsightly finish. Now, if you end up making more rustic soaps, having an edge to it obviously isn't unsightly, but if you have something that looks a little more sophisticated, it looks a little bit out of place. That, of course, is my personal opinion, so you do you. For this soap bar, I'm gonna press a little harder so we can make a little bit of a more distinct bevel. It's quite easy to bevel when the soap is hard and soft. In fact, I find it's a little easier to do when it's harder. Now, if I hold it up, you can see the difference between those beveling styles. This one is a lot thicker, and then this one is a lot thinner. You can also bevel the top wherever that little lip is, where it touches the top of the silicone mold. You can just make that nice and smooth too. And while I'm beveling these bars, I wanted to take a second to talk about the colors and how you color these first three soaps. I just wanna throw it out there that if you get your colorants in the mail and you want to make a design change, maybe you don't like the pink and the green together, maybe you wanna do yellow and pink, feel free to change that up. The ratios will still be the same. I personally, whenever I start a new craft, like very, very concise step-by-step -step instructions that I can follow to the T, but I know some people want to start being really creative and customizing right out of the barrel. And for those people, I specifically tried to pick colors in the set that I thought would complement one another and fragrance oils that will do well no matter what colors they are with as well. And just like that, we have two beautiful batches of soap underneath our belts. I am so proud of you for sticking in there. If you have cut your bar already, be sure to tag me in a photo on Instagram. I so very desperately want to see what you guys are creating. Let me know if you went with the Royal Upgrade or if you just did the basic soap. Though admittedly, there's nothing basic about these bars. They still look really good and really professional. The final soap we will be creating will be a drop swirl. It's going to be in mermaid colors, and I'm very excited to share that with you soon. If you're interested in seeing more tutorials, let me know down in the comments below. If you've really enjoyed this teaching series, I want to hear your feedback. I want to make more videos that teach you guys all about the wonderful world of soap making. And until next time, have an absolutely royal day, guys.